again, everybody. <laughs> okay, so it turns out sometimes computers suck. And like the last quarter of my video, not quarter, the last 20 minutes though of my video from yesterday did not upload, which means it just cut off mid-sentence and we wound up with you know, incomplete thoughts and no resolution. <laughs> you have all been so kind in your comments and so generous, even though it literally just goes, <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you for your generosity of spirit. Um, here's the last little bit of the video that you should have seen all in one production. I was going to upload everything just redo it again but then i realized that the people who had already watched an hour and a half of video like i didn't want to force you guys to watch it all twice so here's the last little chunk i hope you enjoy and i hope you'll come back <laughs> oh my goodness oh happy stitching everybody and i adore this finish it is it's really beautiful i Hers was done. She did uh, two colorways um, before doing the sew along. One was in kind of rusty cinnamon colors, gorgeous. And the other was in aquas. And my sister did the sew along as well. And she went the aqua route, which I was so tempted by because it's one of my favorite colors of all time. But I didn't have enough scraps in aqua despite maybe because I use it maybe because despite it being one of my favorite colors I just don't gravitate it towards it in quilting I don't know but I had a lot of blues and periwinkles and so with the inspiration of this palette I was like oh I'll just do a periwinkle blue purpley theme and then it all came together <laughs> this one's so light but it was a rifle paper company and I fussy cut that bunny and I love it. It shows a lot better in person than it ever has in, you know, in screen picture transfer. Anyways, this one was really, really fun to do. Well, okay. It was really frustrating at times. The result is really fun to do, really fun to have. And as with so many, pretty much all of my current quilts, I've got a pieced portion in the back which is just all the backgrounds this time. I didn't throw any of the main colors because I put this gorgeous, gorgeous batik on the back. So yeah, this one was fun. And I just did like a all over loopy quilting. And this one I quilted a little looser. Um, I go through phases where I like really densely quilted things or I like really soft, fluffy, loosely quilted and Last year was a loosely quilted phase. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I don't remember what this one's called, but you'll be able to see her iterations of it if you go onto her Instagram. So pretty fun. I love the finish. Okay, and that brings us to my last and most recent finish, Legendary by Elizabeth Hoffman, Hartman. Oh my gosh, Hoffman, Hartman. And I am a Sasquatch fan, <laughs> um, which you'll come to learn. And if you've watched my floss tube, sorry, I had an avalanche, you'll, you'll know. <laughs> I started this quilt, so I found the pattern. I'd seen the pattern. And then when we were on vacation a couple of years ago, I think it was 2021, because nobody went anywhere in 2020. So it had to be 2021. I saw this background fabric in California at a quilt shop because of course when you're traveling you have to find the local shops <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh this could be the background for Sasquatch it would be perfect and we'd been camping so I was feeling very adventure and mountainy and um, so I bought the fab no I didn't buy the fabric I didn't I bought a fat quarter I was like well I don't even have the pattern with me like I'll just have to, I'll just go home and we'll see. And you know, it's directional. That would kind of be a pain anyways because of the trees. 
and there's a lot of little triangles. I'm not gonna fuss with it. So I left it behind and I got home and I couldn't get it out of my head. And so within two or three days of being home, I was like, you know what, it's the background. I'm gonna buy it. So I logged on to their site and I bought the three or four yards or whatever it calls for, four yards of background. And I think I bought extra because I knew it was directional so I might have to tweak some stuff. So I probably bought four and a half or something like that. And then I started collecting greens because I wanted texture. I knew I wanted more than one green, but I didn't want like trees or uh, I didn't want prints really. I just wanted textures. So I was very picky. <laughs> I was very particular in my color choices. And I had this, it's a, it's actually a batik, Ugh. but it's a funky, textured batik. I don't know if you can see, but there's actual, there's actual texture to it. It's the coolest batik. And when I bought it, I initially thought I would use it for a gingerbread house pattern that I had at the time. And then I didn't wind up using it. So it's just something I've held on to, and it wound up being an excellent Sasquatch. So let me get back and see if I can get everything. Here, I'll take my slippers off so I can stand on my quilts. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> A circus show as well. Oh, it's so fun and I intentionally laid out the colors so that it would look like Sasquatch was walking deeper into the forest so you'll notice it gets darker as it goes to the one side of the quilt than the lighter side and that was completely intentional <laughs> and then it has this gorgeous backing which was too pretty to like mess with. I just loved it. I love owls and the colors somehow it's so different. Like I hesitated before buying the backing too, because I was like, it's the colors are good, but it's so different than the front <laughs> thematically. Right. But something about like the lighter breast and face of the owl and then the, the variation of greens from like the really blue greens to the olive, I don't like the word drab, but comparatively, you know, more subdued yellowy greens. It like, it just all came together because that's what I'd done on the front. So there it is, my most recent finish. And I actually, so I used to use I have an alternate machine. I have my 350, which is my my beautiful here. I'll switch this around and show you. My beautiful little baby. <laughs> which I sold. I worked um at a quilt shop and I was able to um sell some of my patterns there. And so I used the pattern proceeds to pay that off. And so I'm, I have an extra emotional attachment to that, as well as it being the Ricky Tim's absolutely gorgeous brace plate on it. Um, but I, um, I have an alternate, uh, an old, uh, what is it? Artista 200 that has a bit deeper throat on it, throat plate. So it, um, I'll sit down now. Um, anyways, it, my brain just went out the window. <laughs> um, anyways, so it was easier to quilt. I usually used that for quilting because it was just a little bit easier to get the bulk of the quilt under the arm and kind of still have a little bit of space to maneuver. I have used the 350, but my 200 is, uh, out of commission right now. It decided to give up the ghost last month and <laughs> which is so sad it's such a good machine it just needs to be fixed i mean it turns on and stuff but it is not stitching in any way that will last um and i have tried everything i know how to do and called different people who know what they're doing and and we still haven't been able to fix it anyway so my little artie has to go to the doctor and um as a result i i simplified the quilting on this I really wanted to do kind of a meandering, like kind of misty look in the quilting. And I wound up simplifying to just the diagonal line quilting because I, 
I was upset about my machine, <laughs> but I wanted this done and usable. And my husband will be very happy that I've showed it in my video because I keep telling him, no, it's the only quilt that's like truly pristine right now. So you can't use it <laughs> until I share it and then you can use it. Anyway, he really likes the Sasquatch finish. Okay. So there's, that's my work. That's what I've done. And I guess I have a couple in the works on the wall back there, but the, my, of my completed projects, that's what I still possess. Um, and as you can tell, some of them I absolutely adore and some of them are like, okay, well, mm, nah. uh, and that's fine. <laughs> that's how it goes. Sometimes we don't always get the, the stellar finish we dreamed of. Um, especially when you're doing samples, sometimes it's not your style. And that's what I found is that a couple of my finishes, they're really beautiful, but they're just not me. And so, um, yeah, they just haven't, they've been used, but you know, don't have the attachment to them, I guess. Okay. So what I'm currently working on, which I'll go over really briefly only because we're an hour and a half into this video and I, um, don't want to take your whole day, um, but it will kind of give us a starting point for going into next month's video. So um, my videos, my quilting videos specifically will air on the 16th of every month. And that is in honor of my grandma. That's her birthday is February 16th. And I had intended to film last week and then my health just kind of like, and so I didn't. <laughs> um, but I'm feeling better and I wanted to get it out in February because that's when I had intended to start the series. And so March 16th will be my next uh, Quilting Bee video. And I will show you my progress on the projects we're about to discuss. So the first one I am actively working on because as with so many quilters, I know you're out there because I've talked to you. <laughs> you have more than one thing going. There are some amazing people that will do one quilt, they're monogamous, and they're just like, boom, 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 done. Boom, 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 done. And that, you know, kudos. I have, that's amazing. I have at times focused like that, but I actually just enjoy being a little hummingbird and flitting from, you know, project to project. So <laughs> in my true hummingbird style, I have three or four that I'm actively working on. And I'll just I'll kind of, what I'll do is I get one up to a certain point, like there's steps in project, in quilts, right? Like, so you'll do the cutout of one area or you'll assemble one portion that then becomes part of something else. And so I'll kind of complete one step on a project and I'll be like, okay, do I want to go on to the next step or do I want to work on something else for a minute? And so I kind of stagger my projects that way. And right now, so this one, this is why we kept it to the side. This is what I'm currently working on. So this is my old Pierre quilt with the forget-me-nots, which I love, but um, if you were able to look closely at it, you will see that nearly 15 years of use has taken its toll. And, and like use, active use, it would be on my bed and on our couch. And like, I just, I adore it. I want it out and but it's getting to the point where its use needs to slow down if I want it to survive at all. So I, I found that I needed to do another one. So I have a tub <laughs> of everything, which I will pull out and show you. So I have, an, I've picked a new palette and this one I wanted to be that's really, it's the pattern's original size and, um, which is this, it's a three by four layout and, um, and that's beautiful, but it doesn't fit a king size or a queen size bed for that matter. It's really, um, more of a drape it over the edge kind of, or set it at the end of the bed kind of thing if you want it there. And I think ultimately what I'll do with the other one is I'll get a rack of some kind and drape it somewhere so that I can see it and it doesn't get the, the consistent use anymore. Um, but what I've done is a lot of math again <laughs> to make it 
king size and I'm going to do a five by five layout and I'm still going to do the scallops around the three sides because I like that. I think that's really pretty. But for this version, I'm going to square off the scallops so that I don't have to do a bias binding around the edges. That was kind of a pain in the bum. And I love the kind of airy edge it gives it, but I don't necessarily like it's not a dramatic scallop. And so I am just going to I'll put the border on as it's said to assemble and then I'll just square this off so that I can just put a normal binding on it and I think it will still maintain that airy quality but it will become triangles instead of you know ice cream cones <laughs> um, and it will I think it will suit the fabric choices I have made so my main as I did with the other, that one's not going to show it very well. Sorry for the plastic bags. I did not think about that before. You think about it with the cross stitch because it's everything's in a bag, but not all of my quilting stuff is, so I didn't even think about it. This is my main fabric. So this is my color palette, basically. And as I did with the other, I chose a main fabric and then I picked colors out of that. And I knew this was going into my bedroom, so I have leaned more heavily into the blues, aquas, and greens. Um, but there is the pink and there's little peach moments and some of this chartreuse and yellow and, um, and here this might be the easier way to show it. <laughs> so there's my palette. Which I think came together rather nicely. Um, I'm excited to get it beyond cutout point. The whole quilt top is cut out at this point. I had cut most of it before we moved from Oregon to Washington and I got up here and I was like, okay, I'm ready to just like go. And this is last fall and I didn't have enough background. I had not completely cut out the background and I needed like three more yards. So I had to do a bit of like scrambling to figure out, um, my background is grunge taupe, color taupe. And I had, it was an educated guess to find it. I was looking around online and I originally went back to the shop I had worked at, which is Pioneer Quilts in Portland, and they didn't have any more. And so I, and I wasn't really sure what it was, um, but with some searching and then kind of, like I said, an educated guess, because I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the grunge colors after ordering fabrics and stuff. Um, anyways. I took a gamble and I bought three yards and I got really lucky because it was exactly the right color. So it is the taupe. Um, and that will be, so that will be all of my sashings and then these portions. And I saw, yeah. So then the taupe will be where all of the white is, the background. And then my colors. So instead of just being purples and blues like this one was, it's a bit more varied, my palette, and I am in the process <laughs> of trimming down 1,200 <laughs> 1 and 5 eighths inch half square, half triangle square units. So um, they will be um, variegated. And it's just going to be, so my process Something I've been asked is like, well, how do you, how do you go truly scrappy? Like, how do you do scrappy? Because it's so easy to overthink scrappy quilts because it's like, oh, well, I don't love this little one next to, well, no, that would be very pretty, but that one sitting next to this, it's kind of like, oh, do those go together? And then you throw in a blue. Oh, does that, like, how is it all going to come together, right? Um, but what I've found is to trust your palette. So if you know, like if I'm looking at, 
this. And I know that I like all of those together and I know that they connect together because of the main fabric that will be next to it to just trust it. So I've got my little basket here with my trimmed squares, which isn't even half of them yet, <laughs> the beginnings of my trim squares. And when I have all of those done, I will start assembling my little uh, feather, feather units. And unless it is two of the same one right next to each other, I will just take whatever it is. Trying to get, like letting it just be random, but trying to let it also be different and so there will be parts where it's like, oh, I don't really love that set of three together, but they're gonna be really, each feathered star block has, I think it's around 60 little units. So really it will all, it will all work out. And it's just really a trusting the process <laughs> when you're pulling your colors together. If you know that they're good, then just trusting where they fall and not overthinking it. Occasionally I'll make a little tweak. I'll, um, if I'm going along and I'm like, oh, but this would look really cool right next to it and I see that I have one there, I might swap that out. But I try not to do that very often because you can get kind of lost in the swap out and that just slows it down. And and again, like trust that your colors are good because it will work out. It's, it's remarkable actually <laughs> how it does work out. Um, Anyway, so that is my first project that I'm actively working on is my Pierre Star. So my goal by March 16th is to have all of my um, feather units sewn together and potentially there are little, they get secondary here. Let me show you a picture. So I would like to get all of these units sewn together and then potentially sewn on to their bigger squares so that I'm ready to jump into making the blocks. We'll see. Life happens, right? And I have varied. My attention is split right now. So um, we'll see how far I get. But that's kind of my soft goal for that. Um, what else am I currently working on? This is my, we're not going to talk too much about my organization right now, but I have a binder. And then at the beginning of my binder, I have a list of my projects that I have their patterns in here and um, kind of like checklists for each project of things I want to do. Um, that one, I don't know if I'll start that one this month. No, we're not going to talk about that one. So the, the other one I have going is Jen Kingwell. It will be a recurring designer on my page because I adore Jen Kingwell and I want to make every single one of the patterns I bought, which is most of them. <laughs> um, anyways, this is Midnight at the Oasis. And let me actually walk into the back of the frame here. I'll pull this off the wall. I have a pretty solid start on it. Um, Holy stitch, puppy. Okay, so this is done round robin kind of style. Let me back up. And that's what I have. So this center part um, was hand pieced. And then, yeah, the whole center block was hand pieced. And then you add the border. And then these are all little hand applique orange peel blocks. And then it was supposed to come out to, and I need to be gentle with this because it's all raw edges. But you can see there's this sweet like basket with flowers and vines coming out of it. And I just didn't really love it. So at the time I was approaching this next border, my second cousin, I think she is, um, had an active blog at the time and she had designed, I think it was just like little mountains. I think of them as little mountains um, for a baby quilt. I was like, oh, that's such a cute idea. I would love to do that. So I, it took some sketching to figure out like the math to get them to line up in the predetermined length of border and get equal enough equal amounts of mountains in each one. 
Um, but I redesigned that border to have mountains. And then I would say it took me a solid month or so to like settle on a design feature for my center blocks. Cause this is where those baskets were supposed to sit. And it's really, it's a piece, like half of the square. And then you applique the handle on, but I didn't want, I had a couple different ideas and none of them really settled very well. And finally I was working on a different English paper piecing project. I was like, what if I just put a hexagon like flower in the middle and, and I made each one a different color and and that was it. It worked. I really liked it. I liked the finished effect it gave. So it's really fun. These are almost all Jen Kingwell's. The only exception are some of the backgrounds are not Jen Kingwell's, but all of the colors are come from a fat eighth stack of hers that I had purchased. And then the bigger dots are all Jen Kingwell prints as well. And so this is a more designer specific quilt. It's still very scrappy, but it's like controlled scrappy, I guess. <laughs> and it's one of the first times I've, you know, stuck to a specific designer. Um, so it's kind of fun. It's, it's different. It still meets my scrappy wants, but, um, but it's a bit more contained. So, <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. So my next one, next row is all of these little, uh, churn dash blocks and they are teeny <laughs> so it's gonna take me a while i have two four six eight i have ten cut out so my goal for between now and february or march 16th is to get all ten little churn dashes cut out which is almost one side i think not cut out sewn together excuse me um, so tiny little piecing <laughs> and they're all different. So it, this is not a fast project. It's not a fast moving project because it is so scrappy. Um, there's no, there's no quick way to cut anything out. And each time it's like, okay, I have to pick three or four colors that go together cause they're all a little bit different. And I don't want any of them to repeat in the whole round. So it takes some, you know, it takes some brain power to put those little guys together, but it's sure fun and there's no, there's no race to it. So I'm just enjoying the process. So that is what I'll be working on there. So it's two, what was the third one? I have one secret project that I can't show, um, but you will see before it is gifted. <laughs> but unfortunately I can't show the process because the viewer may watch, may watch. So we don't want to give away any secrets. So last thing, two things. I was going to show a few other things, but I think I'll save those for a kind of whip parade kind of episode. Um, this one was just like finished projects and kind of what we'll be working on. So I'm going to keep it to that because we're almost at two hours here. So last thing I want to show is uh, this and this. So my husband, I made him a quilt when we were engaged and he loves 1800s fabrics and I love Jen Kingwell. And I've been searching for the right 1800s quilt that, you know, would have a more masculine feel and because a lot of the 1800s reproductions have a lot of flowers in them. So I've had a decade of collecting fabrics that are reproductions that he likes, but they're not um, floral, not super feminine. There will be a few snuck in here and there, but if it more predominantly features a bird or a, a you know, more a, what's the word? Geometric kind of features or stripes or, you know, the flowers will be in there. It's inevitable with so many of the 1800s, but, um, but I tried to keep a minimal because I had him in mind when I was buying them, but that's the section of the store. He always gravitates towards when we go to quilt shops and he actually comes in, he always winds up saying, Oh, I like this one or this one. And they, they're consistently 1800s. So 
I'd been looking for a pattern and when Baker's Dozen released, I think it's pretty recently. Let's see if I can find a copyright. Okay, it's not recent, but it was recent to me. It was actually published in 2016, but I hadn't seen it. And my goodness, that will be so fun. I'm gonna do it in 1800s prints. And um, it's gonna take a while. It'll be like Midnight at the Oasis. Um, but you can see in here there are different blocks and there are a couple repeats in them so i'll probably just take it a block at a time and do however many it requires and again i'll have my set palette and it will all come together and be scrappy and amazing and um so what i would like to do for getting this one on the road in the next couple of weeks is to pick my fabrics i have a big tub down here i'll show you <laughs> Oh. Oh. of 1800s fabrics and I'll go through that and basically kit up this project um, with him in mind so that'll be really fun and then my Valentine's Day present from my sweetheart was a trip to the quilt shop so we'll end this intro trunk show long show <laughs> episode with my little bit of haul. So I found one more, a uh, little 1800s to throw in there. And I mean, it's a flower, but it's like a spiky flower. It's more of a, I don't know. It's cool. I thought it was really cool. So that will go somewhere in that project. And then I found, because I've done so many uh, projects with low volumes in the last couple years, my low volumes are really, huh, really diminished. And so I am always on the lookout right now for cute low volumes. And my local shop had some winners. They're so sweet. So my local quilt shop is my LNS. It that's Needle Workshop. LQS Local Quilt Shop. <laughs> We're gonna make up new acronyms here. Um, is Quilting Mayhem in Snohomish. And, and there are actually quite a few quilt shops in the greater Seattle area and um, I have not been to all of them yet because, you know, I've not been here very long so it'll happen and as I go I'll share what I find but these are real cute and um, Quilting Mayhem has wound up to be a really good shop. Oh, they're so cute. And this one is like astrological, you know, like Libra, Virgo, Leo, Capricorn, all those. Anyway, so that's really fun. That'll be good. They'll definitely get used. And then I saw Elizabeth Hartman. I tend to collect her projects. I've done, so I just did Legendary, and then I've done um, Fancy Forest. And I have plans to do both the desert and the ocean. But she just released last year a farm. <laughs> it's so cute. And I could not help myself. So I bought the pattern and then I found a background fabric for it, which is has enough movement in it that I looked at a lot of solids. It's done with a solid in the background and it's beautiful, but I want more, but not to be distracting. So this one I think will be great because it's not really gonna matter which way it faces it'll just wind up being little swirls and textures and stuff. It's subtle enough that once you get all the other prints in there, it will read pretty solid, but it will be a little bit of something, something up close and personal when you look at the project. Anyway, I think it's adorable. Little dancing chickens and little cows and the horns on the goats. Oh my goodness. So this is another one I want to go through. My I keep my fabric stash in, my, in the closet in this room. And so, I have to move a table and it's like whole process to get everything out. But I want to pick my fabrics and kit up Baker's Dozen in the 1800s. And then I also want to kit up Fab Farm. So two projects that actually have sewing. And then I hope to have kits to show you in the next one for the other two. So yeah, that's my plans and my little bit of haul at the same time. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been really fun to go through. I didn't realize until I started pulling quilts out last week, well, really this weekend, um, how many I still had. And um, so it was really fun to see 
see all of my quilts in one place and kind of go through them and walk walk down memory lane. Um, anyways, I'm I'm really excited for this series. I hope to have some, you know, tips and tricks as we go along the way, especially as we get more into like the individual pieced blocks and we'll talk about you'll see on the wall behind me that is another Jen Kingwell called Long Time Gone and we'll talk about that one in the next episode because that one it's all on the wall I'll pull everything off we'll show it um and kind of talk about that one because it's it's on the verge of being ready to assemble as a top but it's not quite it's not quite there there's still work to do so um and I don't currently have any blocks um in the works on it so so it's not currently being worked on but I want it finished this year so it will definitely come up anyways I hope to talk about tips and tricks and I just want this to be a really welcoming space for both the experienced quilter and the beginner quilter alike I kind of did um, I'm deep into the floss tube world and and I've loved 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 that journey and that community and when I searched up quilting videos it seemed to be a lot of tutorials and not so much the talk of the the journey and the process it was a little bit more instructional so I think that's where we'll, I will lean into is more of the journey and we'll talk about the highs and lows and the realities and the funs and and inspirations of the process it'll be kind of a a quilting diary but and that's why I call it a quilting bee because it will be I, I hope it will be like um, this video aside that you're just sitting down and we're we're chatting as we quilt together like I might not actually be quilting but we're sharing our work and we're sharing our progress and just kind of cheering each other on and so anyways that's kind of the idea behind these episodes I am so glad you have stuck with me this long it's a long video um, but I, I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to getting to know the quilters and hopefully some of my floss tube friends who are also quilters or even if you're not, even if you just want to watch, um, I hope you've enjoyed and welcome, welcome and I will see you on March 16th. Happy stitching everyone!